Last year, Seiko released a quartz chronograph inspired by the original 6139 speed timer with a more modern design format and impressive wearable dimensions. In this video though, we'll take a closer look at that very watch, the New Prospect Speed Timer Chronograph, a watch that might just be the best Japanese chronograph, not just under $1,000, but under $700. Let's jump in. So I have an amazing announcement, very excited. The day is finally here. TeddyBallister.com is now an authorized dealer of Seiko. Some of you might be like, this wasn't already a thing. Well, no, long awaited, so happy it's finally here. I absolutely adore this brand. As many of you already know, Seiko is that gateway for so many into the world of mechanical watchmaking. And for myself, I think their collection is so hard to beat for the price range that they occupy. We have a curated collection of over 40 models looking at the Presage collection prospects, the Seiko 5 models, including some new GMTs. All of this was hand curated, picking out some of my favorite picks from the brand that I think are great value. We're an authorized dealer of the brand, so that comes with quick and fast fulfillment factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And in addition to that, every single purchase helps out the content. We don't take money from the brands that produce content. How we're able to fund these productions is solely through selling watches on our site. So if you're in the market for a Seiko, definitely check it out. Link will be in the description. Get lost in those different 40 models. Check it out down below. Although Seiko certainly has a storied history when it comes to chronographs, it is often overlooked in comparison to their dive watches as well as their many other innovations throughout the years. Additionally, brands that typically get their flowers in the area of innovation of chronographs come from Switzerland, just typically, with names like Zenith, Hoyer, Rolex, Omega, and Breitling, just to name a few. Yet to overlook Seiko entirely when talking about the subject of chronographs is an oversight to say the least. With the original Speed Timer 6139 being released in the year 1969, making it a key part of the original cohort of automatic chronographs released that year. These early speed timer models of the 60s and 70s have become some of the most sought after vintage Seikos out there. So it is little surprise that Seiko decided to unveil a selection of new speed timers last year. At the time of release, Seiko emphasized the automatic SRQ037 and 035, which came in with 42 and a half millimeter cases and retailed at the price of $3,200 that unquestionably caused a few eyebrows to raise. However, Seiko had an answer for those that did have that raising of the eyebrow, with these solar powered examples also being available south of $700 with amazing wearing dimensions at 39 millimeters, two of which we're going to showcase here with this video with the Panda Dial SSC 813 and the Black Dial 819. So starting with the case and wearing experience, we have a 39 millimeter diameter, 45.5 millimeter lug to lug, and a 13.4 millimeter thickness, all working together to have these wear compact on the wrist. The thickness, a downfall for many automatic chronographs, is not a burden in this instance. As for context, this is actually more compact than the Omega Speedmaster in the department of thickness. And a big part of that thickness is also coming from that dome sapphire crystal on the front. In totality, these wear true to size if not slightly smaller, making them work well in all but the largest of wrists out there. Case architecture and finishing is relatively straightforward. They showcase fine circular brushing on the case tops with high polishing on the near vertical case sides with no stark lines or bevels to speak of to separate the two surfaces. At three, a prominent 6.8 millimeter push-pull crown rests at the usual position, equipped with ridges for easy grip and foregoes any specific brand signature, yet is dressed up slightly with an ornate circular ring. On the sides of the crown, we have two pump style pushers, which function well in practice, but lack much of the same tactile feedback that comes from premium mechanical calibers, yet operates in the conventional fashion with your stop and start at two and your reset at four. The chrono is capable of hundred meters of water resistance, further evidence of this watch's sportier positioning within the prospects collection. Set within 20 millimeter lugs, the watch offers a straightforward three link style bracelet with brushed top surfaces and polished sides. The bracelet, which is adjusted with a pin and collar system, tapers to 18 millimeters terminating with an abbreviated clasp that pairs stamped and milled components, but foregoes the use of any half links and offers only two points of micro adjustment within the clasp, which could make finding a perfect fit challenging for some. Seiko in many cases leaves a lot to be desired when it comes to their bracelets, but this one is perfectly adequate for the price range. And apart from the lack of micro adjustment, it should come with little qualms among owners of this watch. Circling the dial, we have the thick bezel that in this instance is IP coded in glossy black.
black with a painted engraved tachometer scale that looks as if it could really pass as ceramic. And I would assume is the main contributor why so many people are quick to classify this as an affordable alternative to the Rolex Daytona. A fair classification if you ask me. So as mentioned, we have two dials on display here, a blasted matte white and a black surface, which are essentially identical apart from the color backdrop. The speed timers lean into applied and faceted indices with printed minute tracks encircling the dial's periphery. At three, six, and nine o'clock, the dial surface is interrupted by prominent sub-registers that are actually transparent, serving as the cells for this watch's solar-powered caliber. Of the three, the three o'clock register is the oddball and is actually a 24-hour scale not tied to the chronograph, instead the central hour setting, making it more of an AM-PM indicator. At nine, you have your running 60 seconds, rather straightforward, and at six, we have the 60-minute register that is tied to the chronograph function that also serves as a power reserve indicator. When the chronograph is engaged, the sub-register hand jumps to the zero position position and begins tracking the minutes, but when it is not in use, the tiny hand also provides an indication of the caliber reserve between the F and E positions, not unlike the fuel gauge on a car. At the dial center, stylized baton hands rotate over the applied Seiko signature and the Prospects X at 12, as well as a polarizing date window set deep within the dial at 4.30. The loom on the dial, despite not being on the same level as that of their dive watches, probably a result of it just being less real estate than normal and also having a slight faux effect, it is still exceptional, offering great legibility in lower lit environments. When it comes to chronographs under $1,000, I would say for most people, it's going to make more sense to go with quartz rather than mechanical. It offers a better price range, uh, thinner cases, less maintenance, and you have the accuracy upside commonly associated with quartz movements. At its core, the V192 inside the solar speed timer here is a chronograph capable of tracking 60 minutes to a fifth of a second level of accuracy. With that in mind, the central chronograph seconds hand makes five tiny jumps each second, imitating the vintage sweep of 18,000 vibrations per hour vintage watches making this retro design feel even more authentic. Powered by either artificial indoor or natural outdoor light, the V192 can run as normal for six months on a full charge, which takes five hours of bright outdoor conditions or considerably longer in other lighting circumstances. Since you are going to have that power reserve indicator at six o'clock, you probably are always gonna have a sense of when this thing is going to be running out of power. But in those rare circumstances where it gets low and you were just kind of unaware of it, you also will be reminded with the sub seconds, it will actually jump two seconds rather than one, so you'll have a better understanding of this, so this will let you know when it's low on juice. For those concerned about alignment on the hands, the position of both the central chronograph seconds hand as well as the 60 minute registers hand can be finely regulated by specific series of button pushes. In terms of accuracy, this movement quotes plus or minus 15 seconds per month or a half a second per day, right in line with what you might expect from a relatively standard quartz caliber, but typically what I find with Seiko is they usually outperform these metrics. So not to unpack, looking at the Seiko speed timer. So a few things on the negative and positive end. To begin, I remember when these were released and I also remember when they released the mechanical options. And I was just waiting to cover these because when I first saw them, I'm like, okay, I get the whole Daytona type of affiliation, which you definitely can see in these designs. But once you get these in hand, you're like, okay, this is actually pretty sweet. And I think Seiko did a phenomenal job. It wasn't a watch that anybody really expected from Seiko. Does it really look like the old Seiko speed timers all that much? Or does it look more like a modern recreation? Probably more of the latter, but is that a bad thing? Well, it's up to you. Do you like the more uh, maybe inspired design of these compared to looking at the past uh, when there's a world of tons of retro inspired pieces? I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think the only things for me from a negative standpoint on these watches is some people are going to look at the price and maybe be saying, okay, this is more than some of the mechanical offerings. But then think about the wide landscape of just mechanical chronographs under $1,000. You're typically talking about a Seagull or maybe some anomaly of a modular system from some type of micro brand out there under $1,000. Typically $1,500 to $2,000 is the standard for a fully integrated chronograph movement on the inside. Simply put, more expensive, going to be thicker and more costly to maintain. So I think this comes with that upside. The other element just in the designs front that I think people are going to point out is going to be the date. Now the date position I think is one thing, I don't really care as much about that, but you could tell because of the solar cells, it is seated a little bit lower than normal. But apart from that, I do think these watches are absolutely fantastic. The dimensions and wearability are going to be in that sweet spot. I think of say the Bull of a Lunar Pilot. That is a leader when it comes to this price range and I would compare this watch to those. But for those, you're talking about 45 millimeters in case diameter. 
These are 39 millimeters. These are absolutely a total departure from the norm of what chronographs typically are uh, in this price range and just in general. They're usually larger watches. And for those that are longing for a watch that will fit on the wrist that have more of that retro wearing dimension, this is absolutely in the sweet spot. You're also getting quartz accuracy with some of that mechanical looks. I actually like the lower beat type of rate of that second hand. It kind of mirrors that retro, just second hand movement, which I think looks really authentic and kind of this retro style design. 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal. The air coating is also quite good. The visibility, both in the light and the dark, I think works incredibly well. And like I mentioned, when you're talking about a watch and when you look at it, I always think about its relative position in the price category. What are your other alternatives when it comes to a chronograph in this segment? You basically have quartz options. Uh, there are some other quartz options from brands like a Tissot as an example. You can also look at Jung Han with the Form C, look at the Bull of a Lunar Pilot. But if I had to sum this up simply, if you are somebody that wants a chronograph under $1,000, that likes a sportier design, that is also going to be accurate, 100 meters of water resistance, and pretty much check off the boxes across the board, uh, and really, again, just be great on a smaller wrist, I don't think you're going to come by a better option, especially considering that this one is not under $1,000, it's under $700. But all right, guys, that is my take looking at this Seiko Speed Timer. Uh, what is your take on this watch? These have now been in the market for around 12 or so months, so this isn't necessarily new news. Uh, so if you're an owner of one of these pieces, love to hear your comments down below about what you think of them. Uh, I know that's also helpful for other people that are inspecting these watches, but I do think these are in a nice lane where they can carve out their own uh, kind of niche within the chronograph market in which they represent. Also, if you like what you saw here today, these watches are available on teddybaldister.com. Teddybaldister.com is a full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. There are a lot of places to buy online. This is not always the case when it comes to factory warranties. So just wanna throw that out there. In addition to that, also when talking about just supporting this content and the channel, it's really the best way to do so. If so, if you are in the market for these watches and other Seiko watches, uh, it's a great way to support the content as well as giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing. Really do appreciate all the support. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.